today on Fox Pro's Fur Takers. Mike Dillon calls southern predators in a Texas heat wave. By day and night, the Fox Pro beats the heat and stirs up fast action. Plus, we have a Fox Pro first. Coyotes and Grays start right now. Day special hunt. It's all I need. Yes, ma'am. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Five day hunting license gives me ability to go shoot any predator in the state of Texas right now for the next five days. Hey, it's always good to support those who support your product. Hey, we got the Fox Pro Firestorm, the Fox Pro Fury, Fox Pro Hellfire. We got all the Dylan hand calls, we got all the decoys carry cases, they've got a wide variety of our stuff here, so I feel great coming to a place like this and getting stuff that supports our products. Can't beat it. I'm excited to be down here in Waco, Texas. Not only am I bringing my good friend Todd Yoder down, who's never shot a coyote, but I'm also getting to hunt the first time with Brian Trussell, who's a known predator killer down here. You know, Texas is unbelievable for predator hunting. We can call all year long, and we can also night hunt or day call. You can shoot all the animals, which include foxes, bobcats, coyotes, mountain lions. Uh, Texas has a very big abundance of these animals. go over the hill, there's a coyote den that is back over this draw. I get thought his first coyote. You know, right now we're going in the second week of October. But if they get right here, the way the wind's going up that way, you got to shoot them pretty quick. So right now, we've got extreme temperature to start this hunt off. You know, 92, 91, 92 degrees is what we're dealing with. The winds are blowing hard out of the south, you know, 15 to 20 miles an hour. So we're, we're, we're battling temperature and we're battling the wind to start off with. Safety wasn't off, was it? <laughs> Rookie mistake. Don't let that happen again. I seen the coyote coming in, come right into the call. Brian did a good job, 40 yards. I thought, here we go, this is gonna be it. And the one thing I forgot was to reach over and flip the safe. As soon as I pulled the trigger a little bit, I knew that what I had done. And he went to pull the trigger. I heard him go to pull the trigger. <laughs> it didn't go. All I can say is live and learn. Live and learn? Live and learn. What did you learn? <laughs> I mean, we've all been there where, you know, you're excited at your first time out, you see your first coyote coming in, you get excited, you get on them, you know you're going to do everything right. It's just that one little thing. Forget the simple thing. You forget the simple thing. All right, that was our last stand of the day. Now we're just going to go let it get good and dark. The predator hunting in Texas, the best way to describe it, it's a it's adrenaline rush for you because you get to hunt out of high racks. High racks here help you see a lot better at nighttime. You can see down in brush if you're hunting brush country. Okay, here we go. We're staying in the night. And there's no better feeling to be in a high rack here in Texas and watch those animals 
them glowing eyes come running to the truck. Yeah, they're both deer. If you catch a running night this time of year, you can flat load the truck up. But through experience, this time of year is a hard time of year because they're still full. They're not having to scrounge very far for food. You know, we've been pre-scouting over the last few weeks, and right now there's tons of grasshoppers, crickets, which they all eat. And food is in abundance right now. You know, you have beat a coyote at his game this time of year. If you get him on camera and get him killed, there's nothing better than that. Right here, right here, guys. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Could you, man, first coyote, baby. And he fired the shot, and down goes the coyote. And, you know, I think I was as excited as he was. That may be a small coyote, but it's your first coyote, man. <laughs> I remember thinking the first thing I thought of was make sure you take safe off. Thought you make a heck of a shot on that thing, perfect, too. Perfect mm -hmm. hit. Right behind the shoulder. Good shot. Perfect hit. Look how sharp their little teeth are, dude. They're nasty killers. People don't, I mean, a lot of people don't realize just how damaging they can be to not only cattle population, but other livestock populations, whether it be deer, whether it be turkey. Just a good feeling to put one on the ground. We're having a good time watching you Pennsylvania guys come down here and lose your virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Big Time, right? <laughs> and, and little Brian. <laughs> it's addicting. You know, once you get this in your blood, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to get away from it. You're just going to want to keep doing it. I'm excited to be down here in Texas. I'm going to be trying out this new truck pro unit we came out with. Basically, this unit was designed for the rack, the rack hunters. It's going to be a perfect unit down here. It'll take up the four different speakers, mounted to your rack, and then this runs to the inside of the vehicle. It's got a power plug. Then the other end goes in your cigarette lighter. It's got an on-off button right here. You turn that on. Now you can run everything from the back of the truck with a TX-1000 remote control. The one thing when you're trying to get out with your calls and then the caller and all that, you have several things to carry. With this, you don't have to get a unit out of the truck. All you have to do is have your lanyard and your, call, and your uh, remote with you, climb up in the rack and, and go to calling. It also runs off the, the truck power source, which is the battery. So you really don't have to worry about ever running batteries down. You know, every time you move from location, your truck charges up the, the battery. So you never have to worry about this unit ever going dead on you. If the battery is going down on your truck, it will shut it off so you still have the power source on your truck to get your vehicle started to, to get you out. That's a pretty neat concept for this unit. Flip the switch to on, and I put it in the side right here between the console and the seat, and I'm ready to go call it. Time to get after him again. We got about a 15, 20 mile an hour wind. It's a little bit chillier, I mean, it's, it's a lot cooler than it was last night, so these animals shouldn't be moving. I said coming down here to Todd, you know, if there's any place right now in the country that we can go that we're going to successfully call coyotes, it's down here in Texas with Brian Trussell because Brian is on his game right now. Everything's happening so fast, and if that coyote doesn't stop perfectly to give you the shot, I mean, it's hard to stay on I mean, You got so much stuff going on in your head. You've got the camera. You, you know, you're thinking if the camera has them, you're, you know, you just got so many things. It happens to everybody. If anybody ever tells you out there they haven't missed a coyote, they haven't done it very much. It's a lot harder, especially when you get out there at 100, 150 yards. You know, the more practice doing night, nighttime hunting, the better you get. So you know. It's two misses now. 
they weren't blaring in, they weren't blasting in the call. These coyotes aren't real hungry, so they're just kind of skirting out there, you know, just wondering what's going on. He's coming. He's on the move. Take him again. Take him. Good shot. Hey, thanks. You know, that coyote stopped out there at about 140, 150 yards, and I knew it wasn't going to come in any closer. Just down here in your area, how far up will they get? Because this one right here, I mean, it's not furred up real well. That's still a, almost a summer coat. Yeah. Yeah, they, they'll get a lot thicker. Yeah. The first coyote we killed, you know, was almost blonde. That's predominant color here. Yep, but I know there's a, there's a lot more out here to be had. You know, this is just one of many. Things are turning around for sure. What we may do is break loose a little earlier tomorrow and make a few day stands if the wind will cooperate and see if we can get some animals to respond in the day. Fox Pro Fur Tactics, presented by Mossy Oak. It's not a passion, it's an obsession. Fox Motion is another tool that's going to greatly enhance your calling stands. Fox Motion allows you to start a sound off on one speaker and then slowly make it go to the other speaker. So imagine having the speakers pointed in two different directions. And as you've got sound going over here, you can slowly lower the volume of the sound off to your right and then increase it off to your left hand side. It really mimics the illusion of a moving prey. You know, a lot of times an animal in distress is not gonna sit there with the head in the same direction making a distress sound. Fox Motion mimics that exact same scenario to where it's, it's moving that sound from one direction to another direction to greatly enhance your calling stands. Predator hunting in Texas is unlike any other state out there that I've hunted. You know, I've been fortunate to hunt every state out there almost, but there's just something about Texas that is, is near and dear to my heart. I mean, it, it's, it, it's a predator hunter's mecca. We went to a dairy that I hadn't hunted in over probably four to five years. The, the, the man that owned the place had said there was coyotes that uh, was keeping him up at night. We got the wind in our favor. Winds uh, changed out of the north, so uh, it's a good place. We've seen a lot of coyotes here, especially during dove season. So uh, we're going to get down here and see if we can call one up. You always try to guess where the coyotes are going to come from, whether it be a creek bed, a thick wooded area, and you want to set up to where you think they're going to come from so the wind is in your favor. We let uh, Todd and, and Mike set up on our left, and, and Jimmy Banks and I went over to the right. One time I got to see a tip of its ear, but that's all we could see. Oh man, that dog come in from the worst place he could come from. He come actually from behind us. We were expecting to come out of this bottom. He actually come from where we just kind of walked through, you know, back behind us. The coyote was literally eight yards away from Jimmy's. That's not the way it was scripted, but you know, coyotes very often don't follow the script the way they're supposed to. We're gonna go and let it get good and dark, and we're gonna go start hunting tonight.
So we pull into this spot and, you know, get right up against these hay bales. And there's a barn with, you know, a bunch of round bales in there. Great looking spot, starting with the baby cottontail. And it was at a couple minutes into this stand and off to the right, this coyote comes running in. Ryan stopped him for me and just enough time that I could get the scope on him and put him down. At least you redeemed yourself for that last miss. <laughs> Two coyotes. Now he's got his second coyote down on the ground. That's a very healthy dog right there. I don't know, that's probably at least a two-year-old dog. That could be three. Did the job. I'm excited to be down here in Waco, Texas, night hunting with Brian Trussell. Down here in Texas, anything's fair game. I mean, fox, coyotes, bobcats, ringtail. You never know what to expect. And that's part of the thing that's just great about hunting Texas. You've got such a diversity of animals that you can shoot that makes it different from any other state out there. A lot of gray fox. This country is known for gray fox and coyotes. We, we climb up in the high rack, we turn the light on, and Brian right away starts kissing, and I know that means there's something right there. You gotta follow the light, you gotta follow them in the scope, you gotta make sure the camera's on them, you gotta make sure the lights are on them. And all that stuff has to work together and it's hard enough to kill one without doing all that. Hunting a coyote at night, hunting a fox at night, whatever it is that you're hunting at night, it's completely different than hunting these animals at the day. Turn it on. It was two minutes into the stand, I hear Brian starting to kiss. Gray Fox are supposed to come in. Let's go get it. Male. Boy, those things are cool little animals. I and mean, you're not shooting it much at all. I mean, look at that. You know, the cool thing about a Gray Fox is they're retractable claws. You know, it's like a feline to where they'll, their claws will actually retract in, and a Gray Fox can actually climb trees. That's the way I like to see Gray Fox come in. That's the way that, that they're supposed to come in. So this one follows the script. Now the gray fox are acting like they're supposed to act. Yeah, our gray fox up in PA are a lot bigger than, well, I don't want to say a lot bigger than this, they're bigger than this. How's their coats compared to ours? Uh, the coats are about the same, actually. You know, we, in the winter time, they'll get a little bit thicker. You know, they're, you know, for the most part, their coloring is very similar. When I was panning, my lower brim on my light caught this fox behind a tree and, uh, Todd did what he's supposed to, made a good shot on him. It is gratifying because there's a lot of things that have to go right. It doesn't matter if it's a coyote or a fox or a bobcat, you know, I love hunting all predators. But you also have that experience with friends. You're in a stand for 15 minutes, you're back in the vehicle, you're shooting a bull with your buddy in the vehicle, you're getting out, you're going to your next stand, hunting for 15 minutes, back in the vehicle. It's so fast paced.
You know, not only was I able to bring Todd down here and shoot his first coyote, which means a lot to me, but, you know, I can honestly say that I've made some new friends when I was down here, and Brian and Jimmy, and I've already talked to, to Brian about bringing my boys down and maybe my wife down, you know, to shoot some coyotes. I'm sure we're going to be back. Next week on Fox Pro Fur Takers, we head to the Midwest for a prime time showdown in the hills of Oklahoma. I'm going to take him right now. <laughs>